Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Thanks for watching my videos and watch uh, 650 other ones if you have time. And in this video and the following one, I'm going to talk about surface roughness or surface finish and uh, how to use this Taylor Hobson portable profilometer. And that was given to me by Nick along with all the dial indicators and I think you'll enjoy watching that. I am not an expert by any means in this field but first let me talk about surface texture, surface finish and surface roughness. You know my brother used to always tell me, he'd say have you noticed that the closer that you look at something that's man-made the more irregular and rough that it appears as you magnify it however the more you magnify something uh, that is in nature made by God the more perfect it is for instance if you were to magnify the wing of a butterfly you're going to find more and more perfection the greater that you enlarge it but in my career in teaching when the kids were learning, they'd end up with some pretty rough finishes. And uh, I really only had two ways of, of describing it. One is that it's rough as a cob, or the other, it's as smooth as a hound's tooth. But we can measure the roughness and quantify it with different instruments or estimate it visually or with our fingernails or, or just by the feel of it. So let me show you some of those ways first, because that's what you're going to do in your own home shop. You're not going to have one of these. As a matter of fact, I never had one of these until three weeks ago. General Electric came out with uh, these pocket uh, surface roughness uh, testers or scales some time ago. And these would be used by inspectors, probably not the machinists, but by an inspector as he came around. And there are uh, various samples here of, uh, of different ways of machining and uh, you could uh, feel it or look at it and compare it with uh, the product that is being finished or machined. And you can see there that we got grinding and we got milling and we got turning and, and uh, so on. And then uh, the numbers there indicate in uh, RA, RA, which I'm going to talk more uh, later, or micro inches of, uh, of finish. And those are General Electric. Those are pretty snazzy. And I think these are fairly expensive. But really, here on eBay, those are the General Electric samples that uh, would be used, oh, in the inspection lab or, or someplace like that. Probably not out on machinery, but they're in a wooden case and you can buy a used set of those for about hundred and fifty dollars on eBay but that's not something you're gonna have whereas you might actually have a set of these or be able to buy a set of those reasonably and also here's another one and I don't like these as well but this would be a lot cheaper surface finish comparator but it's all plastic and there too it shows you the different finishes done by an end mill or grinding and then there again is the is the number and we've got both sides here so that's interesting too just to compare to a surface that you may have machined by a lathe or a mill or a grinder Here's a piece of aluminum that I just milled 30 seconds ago. That's still rough sawn out there. And we could measure that too, but why would you? Sawing is just a primary operation, not, not the finish operation. But anyway, we got a glare there with the light. But I can compare this finish, and I, f I used a, a real fast feed here. I wasn't even trying for a good finish, and it isn't a very good finish. And I can feel it with my fingernails. And then I can compare it here with the GE roughness scale. And I get a kick out of the fact that they don't ever talk about smoothness. They talk about roughness. Whereas I, I think in my uh, career, I, I, just, I talked about how smooth something was. But the correct term, of course, is roughness. And I can compare that with the milling here. And I really can't find one on the GE scale that matches on, on either one of these. But using the other one here, the flex bar, right away under end mill here, I found one that pretty well matches. 
I know that's not going to show up there at all. But that's uh, a 125 micro inches. So I have just measured uh, visually the uh, surface roughness of this cut. However, that's extremely subjective. And uh, it's not really quantified at all. But uh, sometimes it doesn't really matter, you know, and that's going to be close enough. However, when I worked at Caterpillar, it was all done with uh, grinders and then checked with Taylor Hobson uh, equipment to see that it matched the blueprint. And on a print, if surface finish is important, it's going to be indicated by a symbol like this. Now there may be more numbers in there in this symbol, uh, one in here and one at the top, and you can look that up and read about that if you want. But on the print, it's going to tell you uh, what that surface finish is supposed to be. And uh, then it can be measured and compared and uh, uh, to determine if you're doing it correctly. And, and in order to achieve a certain finish, you may have to use a grinder rather than a lathe. It costs a lot more to produce a, a, a good finish, a smooth finish, one that has less roughness than it does to produce uh, one that is coarser. So it isn't uh, practical to produce a, a real nice finish and, and uh, be cost effective. So, and I have told you in some of my videos, don't waste your time sometimes with a good finish if you don't need it. Another term you might be interested in when you're machining is the lay. And lay is a term used to designate the direction of the predominant surface pattern. For example, milling and turning and grinding have a different lay. So in, uh, in turning on a lathe, of course, you know that the way the lay runs, and it's, uh, imagine a thread, but this is a very fine, extremely fine thread. So. You can feel it with your nail going this way, not going this way. So that's the lay when you're turning on a lathe. However, when you're facing on a lathe, it's going to be circular, like this has been uh, faced on a lathe. And then you're also going to find that uh, with grinding, it, it'll be directional as well. But with lapping, if it's a fine enough finish, it's going to be what they call multi-directional or there really isn't any lay to it so uh, be aware of that so when you use a profilometer you need to go across the lay visualize if you will those of you that can remember what a vinyl record looks like there are grooves in a record and uh, the needle or the stylus is, is following it but with a profilometer we're going to go across the record like this with the needle or the stylus. So that's what the lay is all about. The machine surface may have some waviness to, to it like this, almost like uh, waves out in the ocean, and we're not measuring that, although that sometimes can be something that you are measuring, but it isn't something we'd measure with this profilometer that I'm going to show you. But within the waviness right here, you can see the roughness uh, on the arrow here. And those are the little grooves that I'm talking about that are similar to a, a record, a vinyl uh, record for music. And that's what we're measuring with the profilometer, is that, that roughness. And that uh, we are ignoring the waviness. Also, you might run into some other surface regularity, irregularities such as scratches or, or dents or something like that that uh, we do not want to measure and you're probably not going to find that in brand new work that has just been produced but if something's been banged around a little bit there are going to be other marks on there possibly and uh, the, some of those may show up but we do not really want to measure those because we're looking for an average roughness. That's that, what that RA is all about. Does anyone know what this is? And you younger guys may not know, but this is a vinyl record. So you can see the little grooves in there, and 
course Tommy Edison knew all about this over a hundred years ago and uh, th that can be compared to uh, the lay that I was talking about and and this this could be measured with the profilometer but since the sound varies across here that, that the average may not be uh, so easy to find well I guess we still could find an average but uh, visualize the needle going following the lay whereas in a profilometer we're going to be going across the lay and uh, I this is about as great as I can magnify this with this camera but imagine what it looks like if we put it in a microscope and you can see the uh, the dirt on there and, and all the other little imperfections as well I thought you may find that interesting although possibly it's irrelevant to this discussion why do we care about surface roughness or finish well sometimes in manufactured products such as an engine we need a fine finish to uh, maintain the uh, the oil uh, between the two moving parts that is the oil film and if it's too rough we can't maintain that so those finishes on uh, bearings and, uh, and bearing journals in an engine are usually uh, closely controlled but in the cylinders we do want some roughness so that uh, oil can main, be maintained uh, d during the operation of the engine and the, the piston moving up and down in the cylinder so we don't want it too smooth so uh, y you know that when you rebuild an engine that sometimes that you uh, you cross hatch it with a hone or something like that and that, that gives you uh, room for the oil in the cylinder so let's take a look again though at this uh, GE gauge here and you can see that the smaller the number the smoother or the less rough the surface is so here's a number four and that that's almost dead smooth and then as you move to the other end here and that's in uh, RA, RA roughness average micro inches and when we get into uh, rougher surfaces here that's uh, 125 micro inches and you can see there that we've got uh, milling and grinding and, and turning there's a 63 again we're comparing by sight and feel and a 32 it's getting smoother and smoother or that is less rough and less rough now since I'm just an old shop teacher and this isn't really my uh, my area of expertise you engineers and other uh, men that know a lot about this are welcome to comment on this uh, I may not get back to you in the comments but uh, to, to make uh, to correct me or whatever you need to do but go on Wikipedia on your computer and you can find out a lot more about this now this is the other GE scale here and on this end here that's a 250 average roughness for grinding turning and milling and there's a 500 and you can see how coarse looking this is and you can certainly feel that with your fingernail And we're getting into real coarse finishes here and sometimes they even measure uh, how smooth or how coarse flame cutting is with a laser or, or a cutter because sometimes uh, cutting with the torch or a plasma cutter is going to be the final finish they're not going to do anything with it that that's ready to go on uh, weldments and so on so they might uh, give that a a number as well and someone pointed out to me that uh, you have quite a bit of sensitivity with your fingernails but somebody uh, put a needle a sewing needle through their nail they had long nails and they could feel that it kind of amplified the, the, the feeling uh, that you get in, in checking it but that to me is still very subjective compared to actually quantifying it with a profilometer now when you use a profilometer remember that it has a stylus or actually it's a diamond and it's so small here that you can hardly see it but if the finish is already so fine that it's finer than the than the tip of the stylus or the probe 
it's not going to be accurate. And I hope some of you are finding this interesting as I am. Let's look again here at the very finest. Almost like a mirror on the, on the number four micro inches. So GE, I'm sure, developed this in their own manufacturing processes, and they were such a large company even many years ago that they had to control this, the, the roughness and uh, develop their own system. Well, this concludes part one on my discussion of uh, surface roughness. Be sure and watch me in uh, the next part where we put the Taylor Hobson Sertronic 3 Plus to work and take some actual measurements here on some samples that I have as well as some samples that I hope to turn on the lathe at uh, different speeds and feeds for comparison. So this is Tubal Cain signing out saying so long for now and I'll see you in the next part of this video.